Hello, and welcome to Generation AI, the podcast where we demystify artificial intelligence in the world of higher education. I'm your host, Artis Kadu, and joined with me today, I have JC Bonilla. Hey, JC, my uh, uh, New York City co-host. What's, what's, the, what's up with the hesitation? Am I getting fired or something? What's going on here? Like, and my co-host and like, I don't know, two seconds of awkwardness. How you doing? I missed the line. I missed the line. So You've only repeated it 57 times, Artis, or is it 56? 56 times, right? 56 uh, times, yeah. <laughs> it, it is a Sunday evening that we're recording this, so, you know, it's like... It, why is this a Sunday evening, everybody? It's because we have a special <laughs> episode. This week... Mr. Ardis Kadoi dropped a awesome bomb on educational technology, all things higher education, all things SaaS, all things funding and disruption and the things that we do. And it was super exciting. So Ardis, what is it that I'm talking about and what is today's special episode? <laughs> yeah, so we're, um, we're, we announced on Friday that Element 451 received a growth strategic investment from PSG equity of 175 million. Boom, that's it. Everybody like, if, like this is where we, by the way, do you ever hear the, there's a beautiful podcast of all these famous co-hosts, late night co-hosts, and they have a storm and like, poof. so that's what I needed that sound. I just couldn't tell the story. No, we don't. Do, we don't do sounds on this podcast. We don't. Do we sounds. should just do a sound for this because it was massive. So yes, everybody, what we like to cover today is do a recap of what this means for Element, your sponsor. The reason why we're here is because Element um, is speaking at the tap on this type of communication outlets. But more importantly, as it relates to AI, there's a gigantic signal that this is sent to the community that. AI is in front of us, AI is worth the investment, more important, AI is the solution. So I just want us to basically do this 15, 20 minutes, everybody, what you're going to be listening is, what is the journey of Element, kind of where this come from, who is this amazing PSG that's picked up on the signals that Element is trying to do something different, why do we have a partnership, and very specifically, what does that mean to this AI conversation that we have? So artists. Let's just back it up for whomever doesn't really remember who Element 451 is. We've only yeah. mentioned it, I don't know, 8,000 times in the past uh, 55 episodes or so, but <laughs> just a little uh, quick story on the founding story of Element and kind of how we get to this announcement as in terms of what is Element in um, our history here. Yeah, it's our day job, right? So we, uh, we do this for <laughs> fun in the evenings and then <laughs> Element is our day job. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Element has been part of kind of our journey now for the past seven years. You know, if, if you're not familiar with Element, it's a uh, technology CRM and engagement, student engagement platform that's AI first. And when we talk about AI, a lot of the things that we talk about in this podcast and in this show really come from because we're pr practitioners mm -hmm. uh, and we actually do that every single day. So we're we're building with AI. We're uh, we're we're kind of teaching, we're learning, so, so a lot of that comes from that. But um, the story there is that we, um, you know, it started 17, more than 17 years ago when we kind of connected together, right? This idea that we were find, trying to find a better experience for those students when we were back at NYU on how do you go from a really, really amazing experience on the website to an application uh, experience, which is very legacy, you know, people soft type uh, application. And we were trying to, how do we make that easier? So we started building kind of these wrappers around people soft and apply yourself back then. So, so this notion that student experience was really important and you needed to have a uh, an amazing consumer-based experience from kind of the top of the funnel, which was your website or from marketing all the way to when you became a current student and even when you graduated, uh, it was really, really important. So that's kind of where it started 17 years ago and then moved on to form Spark 451, which is an agency that we did a lot of that direct marketing and that kind of helping schools uh, with that, you know, recruiting and marketing those students in a personalized way. And we started building products there. But then we started building software to make that easier on ourselves, right? And that's where that started. We were doing our, our early predictive models there, as we have talked about, where we 
uh, we're buying data from College Board and, and RCCUA and, and all of these testing sites. And we were doing cluster analysis back then. So remember the cluster analysis worked? I, of course, I remember trying to identify what was the common theme around all the data fields that our partners and us, we also had mm. um, as part of this mix. In, in order, as, as you unpack the story of Element, everybody, something really important to remember is, and this really comes from artists' vision, right? The idea that there's an agency, in this case, Spark for 51 is how, how can we deploy this agency in what it does in terms of recruitment and the speed, mm -hmm. um, yeah. the aspect of marketing, if you think, through the lens of technology. But the second component that it's, and this is where you and I started dancing and we always been, uh, been, we've always been mission aligned is that let's do that through the lens of automation and we're engineers, but we just literally force advanced analytics, back then we call it machine learning or data science. And this is when about two, three years ago with the incredible trajectory that Element has had, you made the decision to make Element an AI first software company and for the past two years, that's been a core differential to who we are today. So last week, you made the announcement that $175 million uh, have been earmarked to the strategic growth for Element. This comes from PSG, a strategic partner, and it's basically earmarked to do two things. Number one, it's setting the growth trajectory of Element to the next level because we want our partners, the schools, the students and the families that we represent to know that this is gonna take us forward and the benefit that we've brought and the impact that we bring to their lives is only going to augment. But the second thing that has done, this investment is earmarking towards this bold statement that AI, it's an unlock for how student engagement should look like. So artists, can you just basically paint a little color of what is the significant of having PSG and a strategic partner? And my my friend, again, congratulations for this gigantic milestone. You were the quarterback, the coach, uh, sometimes the the uh, the the water uh, the water boy the coming water boy. in. <laughs> you did it all on this one, my friend. I appreciate it, Jesse. You no, know, so this is, I mean, the, to the, you know, thanks to the team as well. You guys have been, you're joining us now for the next step of the growth. But what this signifies is essentially, you know, when we talk about businesses over the last year, and we've been talking about AI and how it's going to impact every single business out there. And we talk about how this application layer is going to be transformed and how AI is going to allow institutions to do more and to provide a better student experience. Well, we're actually building those solutions right now. And what this investment signifies is a huge, huge signal that the value that Element is creating uh, for these institutions is real and it's going to accelerate and it's going to accelerate their, you know, the, you know, the need for AI in these institutions is going to accelerate. And what Element has built so far is, is showing tremendous value um, given by how fast we're growing, how much the market is, is this kind of adopting element. And you also see it that, you know, PSG equity, um, they're looking at this as an accelerant for a lot of institutions where element has the right product and the right product market fit, and they see us as a winner. So we, we can accelerate over the next three to four to five years and become the, 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 the main player, the dominant player here. So, but, but the AI angle and AI being that uh, differentiator and, and how we feel that it's going to impact institutions and organizations, now you see it in higher education where uh, we're, coming, we're coming in and saying, you know what, like somebody sees the value of this, right? And the process was very competitive. Um, and, and Element has, you know, just starting its growth right now. And this this really drives home that not only are we ready to play, but we're also, you know, have the backing of, you know, accelerating with that capital as well. Artists, as part of the board and someone that's been close to Element, I was not aware of this number. And I've, um, I have here my notes. 346 customer growth since 2021. Percent, yeah. Right, yeah. percent, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, mm -hmm. It's just an incredible, incredible growth. So 
all of you partners, all of you who are in our Element 451 ecosystem, thank you. You have been the lubricant of this deal in this transformation. Why? Because through vision, through us pushing the buttons and trying to deploy a new way of doing higher education student engagement, um, you have been the basically the entities that receive it and accelerate it in a way. Uh, artists, wonder if you can speak a little bit of the strategic context here, because you know the industry is going through this transformation, right? And then the solution is AI. And everything I'm going to say, the solution is AI. So like, let, let's expand that in a little bit, right? Because the industry is going through really interesting nuances in student retention in a student recruitment. What we start to see is that if many schools have figured out that it's easier to retain than to recruit, many schools have figured out that the th lessons learned in recruitment are wonderful uh, deployments of engagement that retention, academic affairs, student services will benefit from. We're also seeing in, in, this, in the transformation that the shift in student expectation is front and center in the classroom and the student and the prospective student and the parents are all suspecting that. And we also know, right, that the the industry, right, it's resource constrained, right, in a way. Today, it's been asked to do it all at the same rate, with the same resources. So how is this all the answer? AI. Can you talk us through this kind of strategic context uh, on how these things connect? Yeah, I mean... Look, the the main thing to think about is we truly believe at Element, or at least we we think we we believe that the industry, in order to meet those customer expectations, like you said, you can't hire. There's no more resources, so you can't hire more people. So the idea is, can we have the people that we have do more with less and increase their productivity? That's number one. And can we have the consumer engage with AI systems in order to facilitate their discovery of their product, get their questions answered, interact with the systems, get, you know, go through the through paces, get better communications. So all of those pieces, AI is phenomenal at, and we're just in seeing the, the beginning of that. So where we are today is that. AI is helping both on the experience level with that student and on the productivity side. And that's where we're focusing on, right? Because we need to make people more productive. So make one person feel like five people or do the work of five people or, or have that person be more of an expert. And then on the other side is like, well, how do you replicate people that are 24 seven? Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of, that's the whole idea, right? So this AI powered solutions you know, that that's that's what they provide. Like the the benefit of conversational interfaces we've been talking here for the past year and and how uh, the age of the chatbot has gone away and now we're moving to the agentic world with AI agents and how exciting that is that it's gonna allow us to interact with the systems in a more natural way, in a way that we can do work and, and kind of, you know, get that experience a lot better. In our is one of the reasons why PSG has trusted us and we've made this partnership is that Element is not speaking of AI in an aspirational way. I've always been saying there's a lot of aspirations in AI and we actually uh -huh. talk about them in this podcast being an ongoing roadmap that has deployed AI, has solved the issues and they look like that 24 seven support and expansion of people that Element has done through our bot technologies. We also talk about how AI touches recruitment campaigns and some we have these already agent deployments that allow a admissions professional or any higher education professional to have a campaign soup to nuts in seconds, right? And, and then the idea of using AI to detect patterns, we spoke about our application for detection. So all those things are current features that are AI powered and are deployed in Element. Love for you, to use this opportunity to kind of give Element friends a preview of the AI roadmap or anyone who is basically interested in understanding agentic systems and kind of where marketing, automation, personalization is scale need, which is in a way the, and, and productivity, which is basically the, the secret sauce of Element. So 
this investment, it's going to accelerate what is in your head by a number of years probably. So what does that look like? Can you just like try double click of these upcoming AI innovations and the roadmap that you will see element deploying specifically, what is this AI agenda that you think is gonna be packed in the next uh, year or so? Yeah, I think, so So we're, we're really excited because we're in a very, very unique situation right now where if you know the, the conversation that we've been having is all about how these conversational interfaces or AI agents or AI assistants are going to, uh, you, you can now build your chatbots, right? So we talked about how chatbots are built, how all of these pieces are built, and, and everything is going to be through a conversational interface. However, where Element is very uniquely situated is that we have all of the data on student engagement. Element is the student engagement system of record, right? Yeah. And, and we have every engagement or every piece of data from when they first visit the website all the way down to what courses they took and, and how often do they show up in class because we can integrate with the LMS and then even further than that in the, uh, as alumni. So we have all of the data in our system. And what AI allows us to do now is provide a, you know, marry that conversational interface with the layer of all of the data that we have. But that data is also collected because we also have built specific solutions for, you know, different workflows in, in, in kind of the higher education from application management to inquiry generation, to kind of event management, to surveys, uh, to communications back and forth, right? To multi-channel communications. Because Element has all that data and has all of those workflows in one place, mm -hmm. it allows us now to provide a single pane of glass through conversational interface interfaces, or we call AI assistants or agents, to that end consumer, which is the student. And then we also can provide the same thing to the administrator. So the administrators doesn't have to click and, and go through the interfaces anymore. They can just ask the system to produce new content, to, to kind of summarize things, to get insights from the system, or to even you know uh, send communications or, or send engagements. So now we have an amazing system that is pulling data from all over the place, is generating this activity data, and then we have students that are interacting and, and administrators are interacting. Where this becomes very interesting is that all of that workflow engine that previous previously we had to automate and we manually had to say, okay, today or week one, as soon as that student submits an RFI form, we send a communication and then five days later, another one, another one. Well, the because we have all this data, the next phase is how do we make this more autonomous? How do we make uh, those actions more autonomous so they can act on behalf of what, you know, certain goals that we have? So the whole idea of the system or that we have is to move that student along through that journey. And in order to do that, there is nudges, there is, uh, there's content that needs to be produced. There is, there is data that needs to be analyzed in order to see what's the next best thing. And that's what we're building right now. That's really the very, very exciting part is how are we building autonomous uh, agents that are going to take actions on behalf or take actions actually not, not just on behalf, but, but constantly evaluate what the students are doing and where they are in their journey and then nudge them along. They can create content or they can send SMS messages, they can send text messages, they can, they can call the student, they can set tasks for administrators to do work, they can change data. So, so all of these things can be happening based on the goal and this autonomous agents can do that work. Now, what that means is that you no longer have to pre-plan everything, you just have to connect the right pieces to the student's journey. And then the AI is going to evaluate that every few seconds or every few minutes and take the next best action. That is the unlock that is going to essentially transform not just how these systems, you know, like what the result is going to be, but it's actually going to unlock the, the holy grail of, 
you know, marketing or, or even the work that we do, customer engagement or, or student engagement. Because when you think about it, all we're doing as humans is, in, in terms of automation, is like we're, we're looking at some record and then we're deciding if, if we should do something to, to kind of notch that student along. And that's usually in the form of a, a communication or, or reaching out. Well, if the, if the AI can do that for us now, it allows us to have more bandwidth to have better conversations with students or to, to have higher bandwidth, more human-like conversations. And the system can take care of all of the background jobs and take care of all the communications and nudging everybody along. And now everybody has a very unique journey, which we would call, um, you know, kind of this, this personalized you know, single journey or that segment of one, so to speak. So it is, I'm going to put you in this spot. I heard the, something very similar that you and I, in a way, unpacked. Having a cookie, my friend, uh, when Element was uh, it's still in its infant years, right? When we say, let's create these nudges, right? Because what we know, what we knew is that from a milestone called applicant to a deposit, there are so many nudges, and what we really uh, anticipated then, it's that how great it would be to know what is the next nudge that 10 nudge, nudges later you deposit, right? So, And then what you said is that over time, you've created the data ingestion, the workflows that permit that. So here's a question. Are you saying that this is the time now where the holy grade actually gets spilled because the funding is here, congrats. PSG has trust us to go, come and build it. We have been doing it for a while. The deployment of AI versions of LLMs and whatnot may allow these multi-agentic systems and understanding of data behavior, hyper-personalization. So are you saying that this is what's happening next year? We will finally have the Holy Grail. I, yeah, I mean, that's this is what we're working on. Yes, if, we, if it takes us a year, I think it's going to probably be too long. So it's, it's probably going to take us the first six months. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned. But that's the promise here is that there are so many things converging and not just the, you know, the acceleration of the funding, but also the technology over the past couple of months has gotten better. Those AI models have gotten better. Our knowledge of how to implement this has gotten better. We now are tapping into more data sources at Element, from LMSs to student information like financial, you know, you know, financial A data and so on and so forth. So we Element is also expanding in terms of the data sources that it has. So everything is kind of converging, right? We released our student hub, which is which is now a personal current students is a personal app. So everything just makes sense. As I was sitting with our CTO, with Petter, <laughs> the other day, and we were kind of planning new features. You know, imagine this whole idea of having a personalized feed that comes in from that student based on all the courses that I've taken, and now we can make recommendations on, hey, would you, you know, this would be a really awesome course to take next, or this would be a great program if you want to switch. So now you can build true personalization engines because of the gen ai can can give a, can allow us to do that but not just that because we have the system already now we can you know start building on top of it and 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 connect the dots so everything is kind of converging right the technology you know the platform is maturity um, the amounts of, of partners that we have in the platform, uh, the industry and what's happening. So, so everything is converging and that's, that's really, really exciting. Uh, and of course this, this acceler you know, this funding just means that, Hey, you know, before, if we had a question mark, oh, uh, we're going to be able to, to do this. Do we have enough resources? So the answer is now, yes, we absolutely will do this. It's just a matter of, um, you know, how fast is it going to be six months or is it going to be seven or, or eight or maybe three? <laughs> um, I'm looking forward uh, six to three, my friend. Um, I recently heard something that caught my eye and quickly translated to our domain. So if agentic systems would allow a deployment of a human in the loop, multi-thread, goal-oriented, I'm going to move you a student 
to the finish line and I only needed to press two or three buttons as opposed to six months, thousand of events and high touch interventions, all that's basically what else was changing. So how close is Element from having the next holy grail, which would be, in my opinion, the agent is the student. So as a student, as a user, I get to create my agent. Now these agents that are coming six to, six to nine months are on the university side. And the two agents are basically, or the two AIs are talking to each other and realizing if I am a good fit. Is that in the 2025 tech roadmap of anyone in AI and of Element? That's an interesting one. My answer obviously would be yes. Four the months. End. <laughs> Four months. <laughs> But we don't, so so here's the interesting part around that. We would need a place where that student has engaged with or interacted with so that that agent needs to understand the student. And right now, we just don't have those yet, right? So uh, you can take an aggregator site or you can take a site where a student goes in, they have a profile and they start kind of communicating or they start doing research there, they fill in their profile and they... Right. They, they engage with other students all over the place. And, it, and that, now the agent understands that student. And then it can go out and say, oh, okay, let me go out and do the search for you and figure out what other schools are there. I think that's probably a better one, like to be honest. Maybe maybe there can be a separate product, JC, where where you have a, a college search a college search agent where from the student's perspective, they, they log in or they sign in, they load in all their data and now the agent goes out on their behalf and tries to find all they you know he can do school scrapings and he can kind of communicate if the schools have ai assistance on their sites he can communicate with them around different programs i think that's a really interesting one so you're saying we should build that that's what we should build element 311 right 311 is the search thing here in new york city so element 311 or element uh, 450 uh 452. Was it 411? <laughs> 411. I'm sorry, 411. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically what I'm, what, I've, what I'm trying to position to everybody is that this type of investment not only puts us at the top of the pyramid when it comes to deployments, right, and products. And yes, Element Partners will benefit tremendously with this. And as artists is mentioning, this sounds like a gen take moving a student to the funnel of the engagement in a really automated uh, way is fascinating. But there's also a horizon where Element, from an R&D point of view, now also starts thinking about the next uh, things to solve, which in my opinion is how we turn this page to the student, right? Knowing that there's all these things that we do in a way we're looking at the center of the universe, aka the, the school, the school. Mm -hmm. but knowing that also, or the true center of the universe happens to be the student and these technologies allows us to do it, right? So just wanted to bring that up to see kind of how, what, what part of your brain this scratches, but for me, that's the, the holy grail, the holy grail, right? And have you seen, have you seen the movie Her? Yes, of course. Have you rewatched it? No, since no. Since you first saw it? No, my okay. friend. You got to rewatch it with okay. now that you have you we've been doing this now for a couple of years with AI right so you got to rewatch it and one of the things that you're going to pick up is exactly what you talked about is like you have this personal OS or this personal system and essentially it's communicating with other agents out there and doing all that work so so you, you look at it from a very different very different perspective so you as an individual you're at the center and and now it's in, engaging with everything else out there so Pretty, pretty interesting. Awesome. It got a lot of, it got a lot of stuff right for sure. It did, right? And this is where, where we always, I always applaud artistic deployments that kind of foresee and just basically get it right. Artists, right, last question, um, so we can wrap up today. The question to you: the human, the man, the CEO, the father, the technologies, the AI expert. This is one of the biggest accomplishments um, that I think you have in that as that brings it all together, right? I, I've, I've been in your life for a long time, my friend, and I know that as a father, you've worked very long hours, right? And then sometimes your family kind of have has missed you, right? Uh, you had an academic career, right? In a, in a way, you said no to like teaching and they just went full-time here. You move. There are so many things 
that have happened and in a way this is the culmination so of how did it feel my friend coming together and just basically shaking hands with PSG and saying thank you and in a way I deserve this so how did it feel my friend <laughs> It felt good, but it's it's um, it's just really interesting when you're, you know, I don't think it's still kind of computed that this is like this is like such a big deal and like all the work Are so this, far. You're has not come hallucinating. This. this is not a hallucination. <laughs> I'm not hallucinating. <laughs> and it's uh, it's funny because like I, people ask me that and I'm like, well. It feels good, but like nothing has changed for me, right? So nothing, like yeah, maybe I can. I don't have to wake up in the middle of the night and and now or think about it's like oh shit you know if we don't do something right at element or if this thing kind of there's like there's no safety net right so now it's like okay where we we can get to the next level and I don't have to worry that all of my heart you know all of my work kind of condensed into in, into this one <laughs> one you know uh, one company and and like all of my you know my life's work and value is condensed into that. And it doesn't have to be that anymore, right? It can just, you know, I can I can step back a little bit and then see uh, the forest a little bit more and make be more strategic around how we think about creating value, how we think about creating value for our partners, our customers, and then creating value as well for for Element overall, right? Because I don't have to worry too much about, you know, the is this thing going to fail or not? So I don't have to be in that binary mode anymore, right? This is. Uh, it can it can be a little bit different. Like I can make decisions a little bit differently, but nothing changes for me, right? Nothing changes because now I'm like, okay, now I got a bigger uh, a bigger step function to go to, and uh, and that's it. As a friend, a colleague, and an observer of your career, I would say that this artist symbolizes the validation. This handshake is the validation of multiple things. Um, you, the technologist, it validates you. You, the leader, it validates you. You, the visionary, because you created a new space, right? And all the manifestations that you have had, my friend, so he validates it. Even you, the podcast host, he validates it that you are basically um, an expert, a leader, and a visionary, and all those type of things. So love, love, love what this represents and everybody. This is just the beginning of the next chapter of this beautiful, beautiful partnership called Element for 51 and the multiple schools that believe in what we're trying to do. So with that, Artis, um, do you want to say goodbye and send us, uh, send us home? Till, well, till next time, everybody. This has been a pleasure. Very excited here. Uh, we're going to continue to to have more episodes of Generation AI. Uh, we're going to enter into our second year. So this is going to be really, really exciting. And we'll talk more about you know, everything that, that, that we're building. So until next time. Bye, everybody. Generation AI is part of the Enrollify podcast network. If you like this podcast, chances are you're going to like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing weekly, and we've got a wide range of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed leaders and professionals like you find their next big idea. They feature a selection of the industry's best as your hosts, like Jamie Hunt, Seth O'Dell, Jenny Lee Fowler, Brian Gross, and many of your favorite leaders in higher ed. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform that's helping institutions all over the country create meaningful, personalized, and engaging connections with their prospects and students. Learn more at element451.com.